Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to make a Blackboard Collaborate Ultra guest link and this is going to allow you to use this Blackboard Collaborate Ultra meeting uh, with individuals who are not in the D2L shell that um, it is built in and so that will help you if maybe you want to have an open advising um, link or a meeting area or if you want to have like an open hour student um, student area where students can pop in and ask questions to use throughout um, several semesters or to use um, through multiple classes and not having to make one in each of your D2L shells as well as allowing multiple um, advisees or multiple students to access the meeting link without having to be enrolled in the D2L shell. The first step is going to be to log into your D2L shell and then go to the content area at the top. And then regardless of what you have in the shell, you might have other things in it. You might just be only using the shell for um, the guest link to have those overarching meetings. Um, but regardless, you want to make a new module and you can name it whatever you want to. Um, I like to name it Ultra online meetings and really it's up to you especially if you're going to be the only one that's going to see this because those who are joining are going to be able to see it via the link only they won't be logging into D2L which is the whole point of this um, so it really doesn't matter what you name it then we're going to do existing activities external learning tools and then we're going to pick Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and that's going to pull this block in for us then we're going to click on the name of this block and you have the option of using the course room that is pre-built it's already there or you can make a new session so I'll show you how to use the one that is already just pre-built there it'll be the name of whatever the name of your D2L shell is um, there is a plus to using this that I'll explain so we'll just want to edit this one really quick it, again it is pre-built we'll choose that we'll edit settings and then we want to make sure to come down and we want to make sure to check guest access because as of right now the only way someone can enter this session is to be enrolled in this D2L shell which is not what you want to do if you're using it across multiple semesters multiple um, sections or maybe for your advisees that aren't necessarily enrolled in a D2L course uh, one D2L course so we want to make sure to click that guest access now when you choose that and you save it it's gonna create this guest link and I'm gonna copy that guest link and you notice it's gonna have BB's collab in it and that lets you know that's the guest link that is gonna be the link that you're going to email to your students you're gonna put into any um, any course that you needed in any documentation that you needed in that's gonna be the link to the session so the students will click on that link put in their name and then they'll enter the session so if you have maybe a sign-up sheet or something that is being sent to the students to say hey this is where you can go to get to my um, my advising my advising session this is how you get to it um, you might even put it in your signature of your email this is what to use for my virtual advising uh, uh, office or my virtual student um, session offices they click on that link and they enter right in now the plus to using this particular shell the, the course room that is different than if you just create a session is up here at the top you notice you see this lock course room so this is helpful if you are say that you are in a session with a student um, it's off open office hours and a student has come in and you want to lock it so that another student can't come in until that other one leaves or until you unlock it um, would be the equivalent if a student was in your in your office and you don't want another student walking in you want them to kind of wait outside till you are ready to do the exchange and let the other student in so you can come in here and lock the course room so in this case you would uh, log into your D2L course you would enter the session and then when you're when somebody comes in you would just go right here and lock it and then that means no one else can go in so if they open this link at this point it's gonna say um, it is currently locked please check back later which is not gonna let them just go right on in and then when you're ready you can unlock it so that is the plus of using this course room is because you can lock it and unlock it so a couple of other things you may want to set up when you are setting up this um, course room 
So first of all, you have um, the guest role by default is going to be a participant, which is probably what you want, which just gives them the, the ability to participate. They can use the voice chat, the text chat, um, the video, but they can't upload files. They cannot share their screen, that kind of thing. Now, once they get into the session, you can promote them to be a participant or something like that to where they can share their screen, but they don't come in as a default. If you want that changed and you want them to be able to come in as a presenter being automatic coming in able to share their screen you can choose the presenter role I would not choose moderator role because that is going to um, give them the ability to um, delete the recording to stop the recording um, and do administrative things that you really probably don't want a student or someone participating in the session to be able to do other than yourself so if you do change this role I would change it to a presenter and that's only if you want them by default to be able to share their screen Okay, a couple other settings that you may want to uh, choose if you do this session settings. Um, you can allow them to download the recording and you can choose what you want them to be able to do. Um, share their audio, share their video, post chat messages, and draw on the whiteboard. You can take away these privileges within the session as well, so if it becomes a problem, you can edit it. By default, it's probably best to leave it on. Also, you might want to change the private chat. You can choose it to where private uh, only private chats can be sent to the moderator, so only they can only private chat with you. Or you can have it to where the moderator supervises all private chats, which this is in the case that you have multiple students in the session and you don't want them private chatting each other without you knowing. Um, in most cases, a lot of these will be a one-on-one -on -one with a student, so that might not necessarily be something that is, is even an issue. Okay, so we're going to get here. Again, we're going to copy this guest link, and then we're just going to save this session. So now we have the link to the this session. So now when we give the link to the students, it's going to allow them to bypass D2L. It's not going to require them to have to actually log into D2L to get to this. They'll just be able to bypass it. Now you can do the same thing if you want to, to create a session and you would give it a name, you would go through the same thing. I would encourage you to have a no end session at this point, so you would just give it a name. You would give it guest access. You would, I would probably, you could have a start date for it, but I would give it a no end session. Um, that way it's something that's always open to you. That way you're not always having to go in and every week make a new um, office hour session or make a new advising session. It just stays open all the time and you use it when you need it. And again, you can also change those settings if you need to, like we reviewed before. And then you would just create it. And then right here you would have and copy that guest link. So now when a student goes to enter this session, they would just open their web browser, they would open that link, they would click on the link that you provided to them, that guest link that you provided. It will open up just like this in a web browser. It does not require them to download anything. It's going to ask them their name and then they'll be able to join in the session. So it tells them the name of the course they're entering, which is the course room link. They type in their name and they join the session. And it's just that easy. So any student that has that link um, that you've provided, again, on your email signature or um, somewhere else in, in an email, anywhere that you put that uh, link, they will be able to just click on it and access it. Now, it's very important that you understand how you as an instructor need to enter the session. So while the students are using the link, you do not want to use that link because remember that link is allowing that person to come in as a participant. You as the instructor don't want to come in as the participant because you want to be able to share your screen and um, upload files and record the session and all that jazz. So when it's time for you to have that meeting the way that you as the instructor want to want to go into the session is you want to log into your D2L, you want to come into the course, you want to go to content, you want to go to the block, and you want to click on the link to the session. So here I would actually go to my session and I would join the room there. And that's going to allow me to join as the actual moderator. So you're going in a different way than the students are. The students are going in just through the web link, but that's letting them be a participant. With you, you're actually logging into your D2L course to be able to go in um, and enter the session as the actual um, moderator. And in that case, it's going to let you come over here to the side, and it's going to let you use the text chat. It's also going to let you come here and start that recording. 
So that is how that's going to work. Um, and again, you would log into your D2L shell. The students are just using the link. So they're not actually in the D2L course at all. If you go to the class list, they're not enrolled at all. This shell is actually empty. The only person in it is the instructor. Um, so it's just a way to allow you to have a session across multiple sections, multiple uh, semesters, and multiple um, advisees. So the last thing is how to view those recordings. So if the recording, um, if you did record the session, you would go to content, you would click on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, you would see where the session is located, but in this case we're going to do this, this little link right here, this little hamburger icon, and then we would do recordings. And here is where your recording link would show up after you had the session. You would then be able to click beside it and copy that link um, to the recording, and you would be able to email that to the individual um, who was participating or the group of individuals who were participating who needed to see that link or needed to see that video. By default, it's not going to be sent to them because they're not in the D2L course. So by default, the recording is just going to be dropped into your D2L course that, remember, only you have access to. Um, and you would just want to copy that link and send that, that link to um, whoever needs to view it. They'll be able to click on that link um, and watch it completely bypassing D2L. So with this, the student does not have to be in the D2L shell at all because they're using that guest link, which basically allows them to view it without being in the D2L shell at all.